Hi everybody, I am Net Nursing Prep and welcome to my channel. In today's video, we're going to be talking about hypothyroidism. So let's get into it. So first of all, we have to remember the job of the thyroid. The thyroid's main job is to control our metabolism, so turning our food into energy. It also controls things like our temperature and our heart rate. So hypothyroidism is when there is a lack of thyroid hormone, so specifically T3 and T4. So you're not making enough. Who's at risk for developing hypothyroidism? Typically, it's seen more often in women, especially those over the age of 60. If you have a family history, that can increase your risk. If you have an autoimmune disease, if you are currently pregnant or have been pregnant in the last like six months or so, that is an increased risk for developing hypothyroidism. And then these other two I wanted to point out. So being treated with radioactive iodine or antithyroid meds or having thyroid surgery. So what happens is people who have hyperthyroidism, so overactive thyroid, they get treatment for that. So the possible treatments usually are these medications, the radioactive iodine, or the surgery, and sometimes a side effect or an adverse effect of those treatments can send that patient into hypothyroidism. So what are some causes of hypothyroidism? The big one, the most common one that we see is patients who have an autoimmune disease called Hashimoto's disorder. So Hashimoto's is the most common reason that you will have hypothyroidism. Some other reasons, iodine deficiency, so not having enough iodine in your diet. Now in the United States, we have iodized salt, so that's not really something we see very often, but in other parts of the world where they might not have that, they might have iodine deficiency, they could have hypothyroidism from that. Treatment of hyperthyroidism, so like we talked about in the risk factors, so using that radioactive iodine, antithyroid meds, or having thyroid surgery, those can send you into hypothyroidism. Certain medications can inhibit the hormones that are produced by the thyroid. A big example of that is lithium. Lithium is a medication that is used to treat bipolar disorder. So unfortunately, it can slow the release of our thyroid hormones, which can cause hypothyroidism. If the patient has a pituitary disorder, so the pituitary gland is not producing thyroid stimulating hormone, so we have a lack or a, a decreased amount of TSH, so we're gonna have a lack of thyroid hormone. If you're born without a thyroid, sometimes babies are born without a thyroid, so that's congenital lack of thyroid. And then finally, thyroiditis. And how is this diagnosed? How are we going to know that our patient has hypothyroidism? It's going to be a blood sample. A helpful mnemonic to remember the signs and symptoms of hypothyroidism is, Mom is so tired. And I like this mnemonic for a couple of reasons. First of all, yes, people with hypothyroidism are typically very tired. And then also the fact that you're saying mom, so we're talking about women here, and that is a big risk factor, right? Being a woman is a big risk factor for hypothyroidism. So I think it's helpful in a lot of ways. So let's break it down. Starting the first M, memory loss. So Sometimes people with hypothyroidism will have generalized forgetfulness, okay? So little things like, oh, I forgot where I parked. Where are my keys? Not long-term memory loss, like I forget my childhood. Not that kind of memory loss, but, you know, little things that are important. Have a hard time concentrating and remembering. Obesity. Menorrhagia, so this is heavy bleeding during your period or prolonged bleeding during your period. I, impaired fertility, so they have a more challenging time getting pregnant. S is for slowness, so that is both physical slowness and mental slowness. So physically you might feel a little sluggish, it might be a little bit harder to be up and be active. And then mentally, kind of going with that memory loss. 
um, having a hard time focusing, concentrating, that kind of thing. Our next S is for skin and hair dryness. Oh, this one's also very important. The onset is gradual. This is why it kind of takes a while for somebody to be diagnosed with hypothyroidism because it's not something that's readily apparent right away. It's something that's going to be happening over the course of months or even years where they start noticing some of these symptoms, but it's not significant enough where they feel like, oh, I need to see a doctor and tell them about it, right? Um, so the onset is gradual, which is why it takes a while for most people to get diagnosed with it. But hopefully, now that you've watched this video, you can help educate your patients, or if you have hypothyroidism, you can get help right away. T is for that tiredness. So that slowness, that sluggishness kind of feeling. You're just tired. You feel exhausted. I is for intolerance to cold. R is for raised blood pressure, so that's another uh, symptom of metabolism, so a higher heart rate and a higher blood pressure. Your energy is low, right, because we have a slow metabolism. Our energy is being depleted, so our energy is very low. And then depression. Sometimes people with hypothyroidism will also show signs of depression. So this is a helpful little mnemonic so you can help remember all of the different signs and symptoms of hypothyroidism. When it comes to nursing interventions for the patient with hypothyroidism, we of course want to monitor those vitals because it can affect their temperature and their heart rate and their blood pressure, right? So monitoring vital signs, trying to promote rest, Monitoring their heart rhythms, so making sure that they're not having arrhythmias, things like that, and if they are, reporting those. Monitoring their weight, making sure they're not gaining too much weight in a short period of time. Keeping the patient warm because of that intolerance to cold. Assessing their GI function. Another big thing that people with hypothyroidism report is constipation. So assessing them for constipation. When it comes to medications, the big med, the most common med that people with hypothyroidism will get is called Synthroid. So important things to know about Synthroid. First, it is a thyroid hormone replacement. It is best taken on an empty stomach. So people who take Synthroid typically take it first thing in the morning when they wake up before they have breakfast. They're going to be on this medication for the rest of their life. This is not a temporary medication. So lifelong treatment with this med. And teach them how to monitor for signs of toxicity. So this can include sweating, increased temperature, and increased heart rate. Which, if that sounds familiar, those are signs of hyperthyroidism. So taking too much thyroid hormone replacement can actually send you into hyperthyroidism. So it's important that the patient work with the doctor in figuring out the most appropriate dosage for them. And then once we do figure that out, once we have the right dosage for them, they need to be monitored once a year with a blood test just to make sure that everything is within the normal range. Um, we also want to make sure to avoid narcotics and sedatives because patients who are on Synthroid or patients who have hypothyroidism are at higher risk for developing toxicity from those medications. They're a little bit more sensitive to those medications. So if at all possible, we would like to avoid narcotics and sedatives. And then finally, we wanna monitor for something called myxedema coma. Myxedema coma happens when you have dangerously low levels of thyroid hormone in your body. It is a big scary complication of hypothyroidism and I wanna talk a little bit more about it. A little bit more about that myxedema coma. Some common causes of it are acute illness, so somebody who has hypothyroidism who gets an illness. Um, abruptly stopping Synthroid. So when you take your Synthroid, you need to take it as prescribed and you never want to abruptly stop taking it without consulting with your doctor. And then finally, the other most common cause is removal of the thyroid, so thyroid surgery. What are some symptoms a person with myxedema coma might have? Hypothermia, extreme drowsiness, confusion, 
and decreased respirations. So things to watch out for, very dangerous. And the last thing I wanted to do was talk about some other complications that could occur. So we want to watch out for a goiter, depression, infertility, and any sort of heart problems, heart rhythm problems, that sort of thing. So these are some complications that could potentially happen with hypothyroidism. So that was my video. I hope you found this helpful. Don't forget to like and subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know. And if not, I'll see you on the next one.